restriction. In her, that fluid restriction uh, had to be so severe that she could not uh, be comfortable with normal activities of daily living. Whenever he starts talking about fluid restriction, I start getting really wiggly like a little kid who doesn't want to do it, you know. I ended up with this selection of these bright colored top rower glasses that they make into sippy cups for kids. I, I knew how many sippy cups I could have a day. And so you're standing there, you're looking at this cup and you're thinking, and can I get my potassium pills down with just one of these? And we're not talking a lot. We're talking like maybe seven of these little cups in a day. That isn't very much. Dealing with thirst and, and all, I got grumpy. When I'm on liquid restriction, I'm a very unpleasant human being to live with. You really want to cure me because it's not fair to my husband, who is, you know, very patient. Due to the nature of Marilyn's hyponatremia, she will probably have to live with it for the rest of her life. Her doctors will continue monitoring her sodium levels and, when need be, limit the amount of fluid she can drink. Tina, the 76-year-old from Florida, who developed hyponatremia from a rare cancer, was put on fluid restriction for a short time and also had four rounds of chemotherapy. Both the hyponatremia and the cancer are being managed well now. It's under control. It's been normal for a couple of weeks now. We don't even talk about it anymore. Each case is different, and depending on the cause, different medical approaches are required. Do I, is hyponatremia one of the ailments? If one begins to look at some of these individuals much more carefully and with much more sophisticated diagnostic tools, we find that brain function can indeed uh, be altered in these patients who have uh, milder forms of hyponatremia. And what we need to do then is to be able to uh, determine uh, what are the best diagnostic tools uh, to try to identify alterations associated with hyponatremia. In recent years, researchers have been developing more effective agents to treat hyponatremia, particularly drugs in the class of vasopressin receptor antagonists, or Vaptans. We haven't had good chronic therapy for hyponatremia. That's now changed with the development of a totally new class of drugs that was under clinical trials uh, over the past uh, 10 years. And now, since you can't block the secretion of vasopressin, the only thing you can do is to block its action in the kidney, and that's what these drugs do. They bind to the receptors in the kidney, they block vasopressin from binding to those receptors, and as a result, you don't concentrate your urine and you excrete the free water that you shouldn't be retaining, and in so doing, in so excreting the, the water, you bring the sodium levels up to normal. Today, Marilyn and her husband Brian take each day as it comes. The hardest thing about having the hyponatremia is these sudden emergencies, the, the ER runs, that make you feel like you have a threat hanging over you and are terrifying to my family. It's, it's not anything you can mess with. And as for Tina, she says she couldn't have gone through this without having a positive attitude. To this day, she takes the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Glass of wine at dinner, and I, and I fantasize about a Tanqueray martini with three olives in it on the rocks. <laughs> As researchers continue to work on finding new and better ways to treat hyponatremia, low sodium concentrations in the blood still pose a serious health risk to all age groups. It's vitally important that individuals pay attention to their bodies and speak up when something doesn't feel quite right. And remember, hyponatremia is sometimes hidden in the most subtle of symptoms. If you're experiencing any memory issues, having difficulty concentrating, or have noticed a change in your balance, be sure to notify your health care provider. A simple blood test will ascertain whether this might be the problem. That's it for this edition of Healthy Body, Healthy Mind. I'm Dr. Scott McFarland. See you next time. If you'd like to see this program again or watch any of our other programs, please visit our website at hbhm.tv. To answer any specific questions you have about hyponatremia, be sure to contact your health care provider. 
To comment on today's program, call 888-380-6500 or email hbhm at itvisus.com or visit our website at hbhm.tv. Major funding for Healthy Body, Healthy Mind is provided by Otska, people creating new products for better health worldwide. And by an educational grant from Takeda Pharmaceuticals, North America. Additional funding provided by Regeneron. And by GlaxoSmithKline. And by Novartis.